by Justin Soup. And what is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Soup Podcast. We're diving into the soup with my friend Brian T today. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. After a long day of shooting video, still not done. What's it about? What we got? Uh, well, um, Wild Co. Uh, sent me an orbit, a uh, brand new orbit, uh, to kind of do like a, like a little product video for, um, huge shout out, uh, to Zach for that, um, hooking me up with this sick orbit. It's, it's got a little bit of holographic look to it. You can't really see it in the lighting here, but yeah, we're just putting together a product video. I'm hoping to put together some more in the future for him. Um, Dude, yeah, it's show them your logo. Oh, I think yeah, you should go by some, that. These are some custom, uh, custom Enos. Maybe back uh, a little bit. Gems, Gemini yeah. handles, made by Tim Wilson from Light Vibes. It's pretty sweet. It's got the little, the little monkey with the space helmet on. The little chimp, I should say, not monkey, uh, chimpanzee with the space helmet on. Um, and it's my Enos. Enos is my artist name or my orbit name, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I was going to tell you to explain, like, what you do. Like, you have two different names. You have two different Instagrams. Like, explain what one's for and what the other's for and what you kind of do. They, I mean. Uh, well, one of them is Brian T. Imagery. Um, Brian.T.Imagery on uh, uh, Instagram there. You can, you can follow me. Uh, that's just like my photography page. Gonna do some videography in there too, uh, coming up soon. Um, but right now it's just photography so far. Just recently started that one. Um, but my main one that I've been working on for a few years now, five or so, uh, is my Enos Flows at Enos Flows E N O S Flows. Hit me up, follow me. Um, but that one's pretty cool. I've been doing that one for about five years. What that is is I'm, I'm a flow artist. Uh, so I started with Orbit. Um, it's just kind of like a like a spinning flow prop. <laughs> um, I also spin Poi. I spin Dragon Staff. Um, just recently got into Kadama. Uh, Kadama, which is I... really addicting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my new favorite so far. Um, well, my new favorite now, I should say. Um, but yeah, that's it's really addicting. I've dude. been killing that for about every day for like a month and a half now. The dude Cody who works at the sweet shop in town, he was like, "Yeah, just get one and like do it when you're like rendering shit. No shit, like I'm rendering a video or whatever. I'm just yeah. sitting there like trying to hit, mm -hmm. trying to hit that one trick." Mm -hmm. So yeah, that one. Uh, <coughs> yeah, hit me up, I guess. Follow me. It's pretty cool. But no, you do a lot of stuff and you pick up you. things like really quickly which is weird but really cool i just oh sorry go on i uh, know it's i was just gonna say because it's just like so cool because then like you see like this really popular thing and then you have a really good friend and it's kind of fun because we can produce videos and it's like just gives us like an yeah. endless category of stuff to do <coughs> it's cool for me i think like i could just get to see you do all these cool things i'm just like i can do one <laughs> maybe two things <laughs> i just get obsessed over stuff really like really easily stuff that like have fun doing i just obsess over it and drill and drill and drill and drill and just i want to get good so dude like your kadama video like looks like you're putting orbiting into oh, kadamaning or like you just butterfly and stuff. yeah so cool i think that's like the coolest trick that's my favorite one so far <laughs> <laughs> um so your camera what what did you end up picking you said the nikon 500 yeah, it's a D500. <coughs> um, my buddy Batman, <laughs> we call him Batman, uh, Aaron James, he, uh, he's he got a D7500, so I was kind of interested in that one. And then I started doing some product reviews, uh, looking at product reviews on, on Google and YouTube, um, checking out Jared Pollan, uh, Frono's photos, uh, if you've heard of him, um, watching his reviews and stuff. Uh, and and ended up going with the D500. It's very similar. Um, just got a couple other things on there that, that I like uh, over the D7500. And it's going to be a lot better than my current camera for low light situations. So I'm really excited about that. 
Dude, I'm excited. Just for the aux port alone on your... Uh, oh, gosh. That's really I'm just, like, nice. so excited for that because, like, I love clean audio and yeah. having... Like, what I did with our last vlog was I, like, found one point where both of our cameras were recording, matched up the audio, and then I cut back and forth between... I don't think you realized it, but yeah, I used one of your clips, like, in a big way. Yeah. And it was, like, the coolest thing because that's what I wanted to do for so long. And I was like, yes. <laughs> cool. Having multi-camera is so so important to me having two perspectives i think really helps tell one story like for p with peter mckinnon's videos and everybody else's videos and it's like <coughs> as much as i would like to say one camera does it it really doesn't like if you really want to see like a third perspective view of you and a third perspective view of someone else and right. you're going on this trip and adventure i just think it's the best thing so like gopros or phones or another actual dslr i mean whatever it is so that's why i'm so excited for you to get like a halfway decent like camera I, for like a good budget too right. like the camera you're getting we looked at the only thing that it has is a crop sensor that's right. the only thing that's different yeah, sorry that's, that's the only thing i don't like <coughs> about it but i figured for me right now it, it'll it, it'll do just fine i mean it'll be a great camera for me no dude you are killing it with your camera right now like the limitations that you have <laughs> with it like the iso doesn't do very well in low light and all of that you've really learned to master the art it is that you have and when you get these cameras and finally are able to upgrade like and like you're just gonna look at it and be like holy crap i was really struggling to get that product oh, but the, the yeah. thing is is you've got that product right. Not a lot of people would do that. And that's, like, not only talent, but, like, that's just having the dedication. Yeah, there's one one picture in specific. Uh, or a couple pictures in specific. I don't know if you remember those dice rolling pictures that I yep. took. So there's a <coughs> guy that I follow on Instagram. You might want to check him out. His work is unreal. I follow him religiously. Uh, it's Jordy. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I think it's Kolitik. Uh, Jordi Kolitik, I believe he's from France, but he's a photographer that does a lot of like uh, interesting, like shooting through stuff. But they use like three people: one to shoot, uh, one as like uh, like a model, and then they they drop marbles or they drop stuff in front of cameras in front of the camera. And you need the higher um, shutter speed to catch that motion. But my camera is so limited that I can't have that fast like shutter speed in low light situations so i wasn't able to get this dice rolling shot that i wanted so what i did is i cheated and and super glued some dice up and and like had uh had someone holding the dice and have them still and then i had like a string attached to a dice and i had to hold it in front of my camera still so i could take the shot in low light and that's probably one of my favorite shots i've ever had to take because of the struggle and because I had to learn how to adapt and shoot the image that I want and make it look like it's in motion, even though none of it was actually in motion. Dude, yeah, those images are just like, it's, oh, every element just makes me think more and more. It's like, well, I mean, if you want to cheat that hard, then like, okay, I guess we, let's do that. It, I don't know, it surprises me, I things that you can do. I that shot, man. No, so you cool. pulled it off, Thank like, you. it like, and your ISO, you're telling me you just did not have enough indoor well, yeah, light. No. No, I can't. I can't crank my ISO over 800 without seeing visible grain. It's terrible. Which to me is very low. Like it's I can crank mine low. up to 5,000 before <coughs> it has issues. Yeah. Yeah. So like, so maybe next month for this camera. Like we're hoping. Uh, I'm hoping. No, it's no. It's been slow at work. I would say that pushed me back another month. I just want to be able to get it before I go to Iceland really oh so yeah so yeah. like before J august july. oh july, july yeah. yeah no that's dude yeah when i got this camera like i realized my editing style changed completely like i had to relearn how to edit it's just so different and you don't think it would make that big of a like right. a difference but yeah cameras like oh i'm sure dude i wish they weren't so much <laughs> i know yeah but uh what else we got what else we got <coughs> what else we got I don't know. I've been, dude. I've been watching Mythbusters lately. 
Yeah. Adam Savage. Yeah, me and me and Marie like watched this the last season are they, episode. Are they still making? So <laughs> Adam Savage has a YouTube channel named Tested or like Savage Tested or something okay. like that, and they still make a bunch of things, but they don't do like the Mistbusters. I think I know uh, Carrie died from like Terry, Tory Grant and Carrie. Yeah, Carrie. Yeah. She. I think she died in an airplane crash like a year or two ago. Whoa. Or, like, maybe a little bit ago. <laughs> yeah. Hey, wow. One of them, I think one of them died, and it wasn't uh, Adam or Jamie, but it was one of those That's other sad. threes. Damn. Wow. Yeah, but, like, it was so cool watching all of them because they're just, like, taking these normal things. It's like, well, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching that growing up, like, a lot. And then I was also, like, another um, show I was watching a the impulsive <laughs> podcast with uh, Logan Paul and then they had uh, Josh Peck from Drake and Josh oh, yeah. and they were talking about how that show they didn't realize was going to take off like they just no one had any faith in it basically it was wow. just a job yeah. and now like it's so relevant right. still like people like yeah. that's a show that people really watch and people yeah. like like I love yeah, that I show too. Yeah. so I've been like following Josh Peck a little <laughs> bit too but like from these old old school shows Gosh, yeah, all those old shows. Did you ever watch like, Zach and Cody? Like, <coughs> yeah, I don't know what happened to those all guys. Those old shows, yeah, I don't either. They were talking about how uh, the Nickelodeon, like Nickelodeon wasn't really like a machine. Like, have you ever heard about that? Like how Disney is like a machine with these young kids. They turn their actors yeah. and turning them yep. into singers and they really get them going for life and how they, mm-hmm. they tend to fall off a little bit. Yep. Um, yeah, they were talking about how when they were on Nickelodeon, it was, like, never like that. Right, right, yeah. So. What did you, speaking of Nickelodeon, what was your favorite show, like, when you were little? Uh, I liked that, uh, Beaver show. That Beaver show was, like. Leave it to Beaver? No, it was, like, two Beavers. Oh, what? Um, it was a brown one and a blonde one. Oh, dude, that was the funniest show in the uh, world. I liked uh, Rocket Power. Dude, I don't you remember. remember no, not Rocket woogity, Power. Woogity, woogity. The this like the extreme sports one, like the surfing, skateboarding. It had Auto Reggie. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. that is. Yeah, Squid, I re- Sam. Yeah, yeah Twister, like the skateboarders yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I like Ray that Mundo, show. He was always high. I swear. I just never watched that show like oh, recently. Man. Oh yeah. No. Is that on like Netflix no, or anything? I don't think so. I haven't watched that show in years. Hulu. Hulu has fucking everything. I don't have Hulu. I have Disney Plus. I've been watching. Which is kind of garb. Sorry. If you're Why? A Disney fan. Okay, What's like so wrong with it, in your it opinion? Had, it has The Mandalorian, <coughs> which is great. Love it. That's a like, great show. But other than that, like, I guess I've just seen everything. I've seen like every Disney movie pretty much. And like all of it's just like old stuff I've already seen. And it's like. I never see anything new on there, so it's like I never go on there anymore. It also like just started, like that that platform just started, so it's not even gonna have. It doesn't That's have true. anything, and it's just Disney. Disney. That's true. Is very broad, but not very broad, depending on who you are. Right. Speaking of, I'm going to Disney at the end of the year too. I'm pretty You're going sure. to Disney? Yeah. Again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you? How many? Have you been there before? Yeah, I was there twice when I was little, and then me, Katie, me and Katie went with her family, not last this last December but the December before that so two years ago about we went dude it was magical that sounds so nice it was magical <laughs> and you're going to Iceland yeah are you going to every spot that you want to go to not every spot because we're not going to be able to do it because we're only going for six days but but the main spots <coughs> <coughs> sorry excuse me I'm coming like I'm not coming down I'm getting over a cold dude me too this it cold lasts terrible. forever <laughs> um but yeah, no, we're going to, I don't know how to really pronounce them because all the names are really weird, but uh, Kirchfeld's Foss, I think that's how you say it, or something similar to that, um, is one of the main spots. I've been wanting to go to two spots in Iceland for, I mean, the good amount of like past decade or so. Oh, snap. Um, ever since high school, pretty much, there's two spots. Kirchfeld's Foss, I think is how you pronounce it, or something similar, and then Selgelin Foss. And I've wanted to go there during sunset and and see the sunset from like the waterfalls and like under the waterfall and stuff and those are two main places and we're actually staying the night 
I think we're like 12 minutes from Kirk and like 15 minutes from the other one one night. <laughs> so I'm going to hit sunset um, and then go to bed, crash for just a few hours, get up before everyone else does and take the car back there and get sunrise in both of those spots too. Whoa. So it's going to be really cool. But like their golden hour, their sunset lasts like three, four hours because they're they're like when we're going the sun doesn't really like go down they don't really have like a dark oh, nighttime. it's like alaska it's like, a, it's like a blue time like a blue 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 hour dude that's gonna be so dope blue hour is pretty sweet <laughs> yeah yeah so it's gonna be like like three hours of sunset and a few hours of like the blue hour and then and then sunrise again sunrise yeah whoa yeah i'm excited <laughs> dude i hope you capture a lot you're gonna need to bring your computer just dump all the I'm going to need to. Yes. Or bring a lot of, like, I am drives. Tons of SD cards, man. Just, you're going to need, like, a Walmart bag. I don't think ball. I'm going to bring my laptop just because I don't want to bring it across country. Makes sense. I'm just going to bring a crap Armfuls. Of SD cards. Like, you're just going to go to Walmart. <laughs> I yeah. need all of all these. Of these. <laughs> I just look at you like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited, man. I've never been at, like, anywhere like that like i said i want to go to niagara <coughs> falls like that's like one place i want to go i was there when i was really little super breathtaking imagine if you gotta take photos of it though. i know <laughs> i wish i got i wish i got into photography earlier i'm glad i did anyway but like i wish i got into it earlier i've only been doing it for about a year now yeah so i mean like that's perfect plus you're also still young like on the right. roadmap like right yeah. If you ask Gary V or anyone, they'd say you're still young and you like having your things straight and then also having photography and all these other mm -hmm. things, you're able to develop them for a long period of time. Yep. So, yeah, yep. just be happy that you're you because <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, I like being me. It's fun. I'm fun. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that tip you tell me when when we're taking portraits, and you're like, say something funny, because I tried doing that to Marie the other day, and she was like, what? And I was like, dude, Brian told me when I need you to smile, say something funny. So I said something like golden cocks or something like that, and uh, and she was like, what? I'm I'm a what? And yeah, she started doing her her little dance about doing things to a dick. So. At her, yeah, she has a whole thing. She'll show you later. Okay. <laughs> okay. But uh, I was like, no, I'm, I needed you to smile. And she she did this when I like, held the shutter open, so I'm going to make a GIF of her. Nice. Because I found out that you can drag in photos, like import basically a sequence, and make it a video file in Premiere. Oh, really? Yeah, you just go, imp you go like edit, import, and then you click this little check mark that says import as sequence. And you click one photo in the file, and as long as all the photos that's only that's in that what's in that file are those photos for the sequence, you click one photo, and then it drags everything in, and it makes one video oh, wow, file. That's cool. Dude, it's so simple. I was yeah, like, so that's, that's why everybody's that's like, doing this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, that's got to be like super simple because like right. not everybody's super motivated to make right. all of this content right. all the time. Right. Like, I just got sick and it demotivated me from, like, wanting to do anything. Yep. So I just found out about those H, what is it, HDR? Oh, H, yeah, HDR shot. HDR. HDR shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, what about them? What? That is, like, mind-blowing. I need to practice that before I go to Iceland because that's that could be a game changer. I'm down. I haven't done any of those. And your image quality becomes so much, right? like, better. Mm hmm I like I've done like five before one of my favorite photos which I put on my 2018 calendar which was just for my mom just so I could have a calendar because yeah shit wasn't going good um I did HDR and that was the first time I tried it and it is so cool like if yeah also the firework shot I did over the bridge the like 35w bridge or whatever also HDR oh was it cool yeah those are tight and you just take a couple mm -hmm. from like one position and mm -hmm. then Lightroom does the rest, and you can fill out ghosting or not ghosting, right. whatever the hell ghosting is. So, for the, just for the audience, if you don't know what an HDR shot is or an HDR image, um, basically what you do is you set up a tripod and at, in a specific spot, and you don't move it, and then you take three different photos or three different shots, um, <coughs> 
and it, it could be good to be to be have one that's correctly exposed one that's a little underexposed and one that's a little overexposed and when you upload them to Lightroom there's a setting where you click on one of your photos at the bottom bar you hold control click on the other two so it'll highlight all three of them and then you can right click on there and it'll bring down that drop down box and there's a spot on there that says HDR image or HDR something uh, you can click that and it'll take a little bit but it'll automatically take all three of those photos and compile the image together into one shot so it enhances your entire image and quality and everything it's pretty it's pretty slick yeah also it's uh it's in incorporated in your everyday technology now all of the new iPhones are taking like 3 to 5 shots and they're all HDR images yeah. so it does apply to everyone because i think like some are lighter and some are darker mm -hmm. and it's trying to get the best range right best shadows and whatnot contrast yep. No, that stuff's cool to me, man. Mm -hmm. Technology's going places, like. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is it's space limited, so we're just gonna keep seeing more lenses. Right. Gary V, do you do you know about like long term where we're going though? Like where people are guessing. Huh. People like Gary V, like audio, Alexa. People are gonna like people. You, they think that Alexa is gonna be able to be able to say like, "Hey Alexa, order me a cheeseburger," and it's gonna choose the closest place that has the best reviews, unless you tell her like, "Order me a cheeseburger from McDonald's right. Right. and have it delivered to your house." So instead of going on your phone, going on to um, Bite Squad, and then uh, ordering it, you're just gonna be able to tell Alexa to do it for you. It's all audio. That'd be smart. I mean, if you think about it, <coughs> I do that kind of stuff with Siri in my Apple Pods. Right. That's smart. I dig it. Yeah, but I think uh, I think Google's gonna be the one to like push it the furthest. Google and Amazon. I don't <coughs> think Siri's That's scary though, because I don't know. I have Google Home or whatever that thing is called. Google Nest, Google Home. Nest Home, it's something a like thing that. that just like Alexa. Like um, everyone has them. They're like giving them away. Yeah, we have one now. Got one for Christmas. And it's kind of freaky because, you know, it says it's claim it's not always listening. But like I even asked it, hey, Google, are you always listening? It's like, no, I'm only active activated when you say, hey, Google, and my light turns on. And then I'm like, <coughs> well, how in the heck did it hear me say, hey, Google, in the first place if it wasn't listening, you know? <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, um, Kyle the other day was telling me like Alexa will say that you have to look it up. Like she she can't tell you that information or something like that. And I'm not sure if that's factual, but that's what he said. Oh, wow. His Alexa will like say that she can't she doesn't have that information to give to you. You have to look it up on Google. Whoa. So I think they're I think they're always listening. I mean every smart television, they they have cameras in there and like little mics for like marketing purposes. All the it smart It may be a, like a secondary like uh, audio or like a secondary system in there that's not like that only listens for hey Google and it's actually like like if you say hey Google, that's the only thing it can hear. Yeah. And all the rest it can't hear. And then once it hears that, it triggers the rest. I don't know. Maybe I don't know how it works. I mean, unless it like, I, it could always be listening. I, I mean, like, which but is freaky. Who knows? I mean, but I'm not doing anything wrong. They so. they don't need like there's thousands of homes. Like I don't think, I don't think that they need to be listening to that many homes unless they they probably have right. keywords if they are listening. Let's put it that way. Right. Oh yeah, if you're like starting to talk about like bombing places and shit like that i'm sure then there might be some sort of algorithm that picks up on that type of stuff i would hope better be catching people like that i mean like technology smart mm -hmm. i mean look at it by 2021 there's going to be an electric car and <coughs> every from every like main yeah. car dealership which is crazy in its own yeah they're yeah it's eventually everything's going to be electric you think it's going that way think yeah. only electric oh yeah Eventually, I mean, it's going to take a long time before there's no gas cars on the road because it's going to take forever to cycle out a like hundred years. I, mean, <coughs> I don't even know, but maybe not that that long. But like, there will be gas cars on the road for a very long time. But eventually, oh yeah, electric. Who knows? Maybe it could be something other than electric. Maybe it's magnetic. I don't know. Well, I mean, if you ask Elon Musk. He's trying. He's trying to move to Mars and die there. That's true. But they said that the science isn't in mine or your lifetime to terrify, terrify Mars. Right. 
So I think I, would a, never go there. Mm, I don't really want to space travel, even though like there's a brand new rocket from SpaceX it's going to be launching with NASA this year. I would love to go to space and orbit the Earth and see the northern lights from from space like from that'd be dope from uh like the space station or whatever the u.s space station or whatever that you could be in the u2 plane international space station is that what it is up there? yeah yeah i was watching a show called one strange rock um and will smith is like a host on there or whatever um they talk like astronauts and they show images orbiting the earth and that just looks so cool and like you can orbit the earth in in 45 minutes yeah, so, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Enos, the the chimp, orbited the Earth twice in an hour and a half. So you can orbit the Earth essentially in forty five minutes. So I think it would be amazing, and a crazy money maker for someone out there if they did it, to be able to create an amusement ride that you'd obviously have to. There'd be a long waiting line. You'd have to like book your trip in advance. Mm-hmm. But you can either book. A 45 minute trip or let's say an hour trip let's say how long it takes to get up there and then around blah blah blah. Let's, 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 you could book an hour trip you could book um a two hour trip or like oh you, that's that like, would be like let's say you could book by orbit one orbit is this much two orbits is this much three orbits is this much they do have trips going up there but they they're planned like weeks like days because like yeah it takes a day to get up there and okay. get and then it would take a day to get down basically is what they're saying okay but they're saying it costs like a million. But Elon, well, once you're up there, you're fucking. You're, I'm yeah. Sure, I'm almost. No, you, you're whatever. good. <laughs> cool. Um, um, you're good. So I don't know if you could do that on this. I don't know if this is like a PG thing. Doubt it. No, not a PG thing. <laughs> just, uh, uh, so, but yeah, no. Once you're up there, you can orbit in 45 minutes. That'd be so cool to have an amusement ride or like. See, but you could money to be able to. What would be like that would be a U2 plane. U2 planes go 70 70 thousand miles up above the atmosphere. Yeah. Or like. 70,000 okay. miles up. Adam Savage did that, and that's so cool because you can see the whole, you can see the curve, kind of, and you're in a plane. Oh. And well, you're and you're wearing an astronaut suit because yeah, you're just well, up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, I think it would be cool from the International Space Station. Just Dude, they there. have a, like, 360 dome that you walk out on there. Mm-hmm. Dude, that would be tight. <laughs> I heard someone died because they tried to launch a rocket because they could take their own photo they tried to take their own photos to prove that the earth wasn't flat so they launched their own rocket doing a test and it killed them <laughs> yeah <laughs> sad like there's more official ways to do it if you like right but i mean i don't know just he tried to make his own rocket like <laughs> that whole flat earth thing is ridiculous dude it's a conspiracy like a big not yeah, it's a ridiculous one because there's so many photos and like there's no cut. Co- there's right. like why would there be so much science about the right. United States or the outer space? So do you think we went to the moon? Yes. Do you think we went to the moon when they said we went to the moon? Yes. Okay. I mean, like I know you you like you I believe don't we don't don't right? I think we went to the moon just not then because if you think about it, they didn't. <coughs> just the whole time scale thing it didn't seem right but i don't know but yeah i do think they went up there i just want to know how they broadcasted like the filming on the television because it was all analog there was no wait a minute was it live i thought they had live broadcast for that did. no I no they recorded it. oh they might have recorded it that's what i thought i don't think they live broadcast there's live. only one Maybe reason they did. there's only one reason why i think that it was uh it was real why well, because they were talking about solar flares and how we got really lucky when we went to the moon because there's so solar flare patterns were spread apart. When they went, we went between a solar flare. Okay. So, and solar flare is like the the suits that we were wearing back then right. didn't protect against the radiation, and a right. solar flare would just would wipe. Yeah. yeah. No question. Like, yeah. 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 But. Yeah, solar flares, and there's one other sort of radiation that's up there, but like it comes, it's not very, not very often you see it. Wow. Yeah, and everyone says like, how can the flag be flying in the in the wind when there's no wind? It wasn't 
flying in the wind. Like if you, it was just was it just out? Straight and it's gonna stay straight. Stay straight. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that would be <laughs> right. Like it wouldn't. No, there's no gravity to pull it down. That's Is so there? crazy. I never thought about that. No, there's no gravity to pull it down. The, ooh, the moon has no gravity. Oh, uh, does it though? It has to. It has to have some because they're walking. <coughs> around, right? They're bouncing. Okay. They said that bounce is so it like. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah, if you straight. said it, it would stay straight, it might move because right. uh, like it's just outside. It's right. not in a concealed containment area. Right, there's no wind, so yeah, you could, and it should stay right there. You could even ripple it probably and have it stay. <laughs> <laughs> and then it would stay Making rippled. Different shapes and stuff. When you're like, look, mom, my mom, I made the pin. Because <laughs> <laughs> pins are really rippled. <laughs> like the 3D ones. God, it'd be cool to go to space. Dude, Elon made a, a rocket where all the parts return back to designated spots. They're like little hover pads in the ocean. And all the parts of the rockets return back to the designated spots. So there's no waste. There's no outer space waste that's coming per rocket. And that's what he wants. He wants no waste. He wants to be able to resend every rocket. So, like, each rocket will be able to be used at 70 times or more once he gets the technology fine-tuned. And starting with the... This this new rocket, it's something Dragon or something like that. It's, it's a specific name for it. I don't really know. But, uh, or actually, I should look it up. That's crazy. Was I out of frame? I no, I don't, I don't think you're out of frame. I don't know how far I can read that. Yeah, I'm going to look it up. Um... It is the Starship. Yeah, this is... That's the Starship. <coughs> it's phallic. It's, pr- it's pretty cool, though. It's going to be the... It's going to waste less gas. It's going to be doing more and less... I don't know the cool. exact s- science, but like there is also one more rocket that can waste less fuel and get further. That's the rocket that could go to Mars with like hydrogen going over the rocket fuel or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure the science. I'm not a scientist. It's just like I was listening to the Where's podcast. He money from? Well, he originally made PayPal and he sold that off. And then he had a couple other companies and he sold those off when they got a little bit bigger. And then. Uh, that makes sense. And then once you have money. You- you just make money. Yeah. And he's just good at making money. And then he started making Tesla. And and he also, like, the, the deal with the Cybertruck where you, you spend $100 and you pre-order a Cybertruck. That's, like, kind of a gimmick thing so that he can get all of this money. Show investors. Well, yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same thing with Tesla. It's all publicly, owned, like, publicly owned. I mean, he it's a pe- publicly owned company, so... When it first started, it didn't make a single profit in a single quarter. It's nope. so long, <coughs> but yet he was still making a killing because he was able to set his own salary. Because as a publicly owned company, he wasn't really losing anything. No, he's just making a kinda, bunch. In a way, kind of conning the public to make a fucking killing, but yet doing a good thing. And now I think they're making money, too, so... Yeah. Profit, so, and now they're probably going to be doing really good. But so. the thing is, they can make a... Um, a repl- or like a replica of any car because they have that chassis and they just slap a new body on it. Yep. So if they want to show any car off, they can just be like, look, and then have pre-orders, get a little bit more money, put that into production, and then actually send yep. out the product. Yep. But the Roadster looks pretty dope. <laughs> yeah. The problem is is they, they spend so much on doing all of this that I don't think they actually what have dealerships. That that cyber truck? I want it. Dude, I want that one. Looks so ridiculous, but I think um, it would be cool. I think it's preposterous <laughs> in every right, but I think that's what makes me love it is because it's exactly what people are like. There's going to be future trucks just like this, and I think it's just so appealing because of how minimalist it is. Right. It's just, a, but we'll see. Like what the ruling comes down on it because of the steel. They were saying that uh, we don't know if the F- FCC or FC or FCA or whatever. Whatever they are is going to really be okay with this because the cars aren't really made of that thick of steel. Right. 
and they just want everybody to be safe. Like, what if that car crashes into a non cyber truck? Right. Like, what's going to happen? Because that's like right. a tank. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they also said that they hit the the car door and the cyber truck door with a rubber mallet <laughs> instead of a metal mallet during the showcasing. Oh, really? Yeah. Would you throw see when they threw the golf ball out of the rock or whatever it was? At yep. It, and it shattered like. They also posted a video, like, behind the scenes of, like, them trying it again, and they said it was, like, before footage, but there was a vacuum cleaner, and, like, it looked like they just cleaned out the car oh, from the yeah. glass shattering, so it was clearly after the fact, but it worked, but they right. said because they hit the door with the mallet, that enabled the shake from the window, and the window went down a little bit. No, no, it's true. Okay. And so that enabled the window to have shake in the window when it got hit and then it shattered because it will lock itself in when it's fully rolled up gotcha and now that'll, that'll create less shake and the window won't smash but i mean as good as technology that is or like as right. smart as that is to have a shatterproof glass a lot of people if it's in california or anywhere else during the summer are gonna have that window rolled down a little bit right and no one's gonna just be like oh you like uh someone's gonna throw a rock at me now so is that glass really more stable or less stable than a normal window? I don't really know. That's what I want to know. Because if like you can just throw a rock at it, is that right. less stable or is it more? Right. You'd think more, but it depends on if it's just designed on being like locked into place on all sides. Right. Yeah, I don't know. <coughs> but yeah, I want a cyber truck. Hook me up. Trevor showed me that new Porsche, the all electric one. I haven't seen it. Oh, dude, it looks so bad. You got any cool projects coming up? Um, this I've been planning this for like a long time. I'm I'm actually very stoked now, like so much more happy now that I can see everything all laid out. Cause I had it against that tapestry, the one behind the camera, yeah. and it would just didn't go well. It no, just I like this black one. yeah, this works better once I actually get another row and cover up the shelving area and really block this off you know what you need laptop so you can put a laptop here or even like a monitor i can even hook up my laptop you can have a monitor here so like you can bring up clips see that's what i want to do so then i can hook my obs up to here and my mics up to here cool. and i can just do it all right there Cool. But I also need a third person, so eventually, like, they can just direct the whole thing when I have two to three cameras, yeah. one wide, two cameras on each face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, I have big ideas. I just need... I the need, gear to do it. I need the gear to do it. Which but, is the tough part. But I'm doing what Gary Vee said, and I'm just starting. And I think mm -hmm. this is, like... See, that's the thing. You just got to do it. Like, and yeah, too often. And it's, and it's, and it's easier said than done. Because yeah. I, I sit, sit there and tell myself, just do it. Nike, just do it. Not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Nike sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be dope. Um, but yeah, no, I just got to do it. And I, I have that problem. I'll be sitting there, like, watching McKinnon or whatever, or someone on, on YouTube, and all of a sudden I'll just be like, God, I want to, you know, I want to do some of this stuff. I want to start filming. And I'll sit there and be like, dude, you just got to do it. But well, yet I won't do it. It's like. Well, now that we have, like, you can use this area with me, too. Right. Like, this isn't just my area. Yes, I invested, so right. did Marie. But, like, we can really grow this thing and just help each other, which is why I'm really excited about having this. Like, doing that video with you earlier, like, we can open. If you would get help, help from that people and they send us more, we can open them and do unboxing videos and yeah. really have a nice production overall, nice right. audio quality, quality and nice video. Right. So that's why I'm really stoked, besides right. just podcasts. We can use this area for so much other things. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely, and it's it's nice that <coughs> you, you now and that, that we kind of like connected and, and we're working together now, because now I have someone to actually do this stuff with that has knowledge in it that can teach me too, and we oh, can yeah. build off each other, and it's just so much easier to have a team, even though we're not really like a team yet, we're just a pair, but even with just a pair, it's just so much easier to just do it alone, so... It's just nice to have you. Well, no, it's nice and, to have uh, you too. So, uh, but like, that's what I've really wanted for the longest time is like a team. Like a lot of people want to try to do it themselves and you mm -hmm. can't do Stop. that. I'm going to tell you, it, like, that's the hard road, man. I've tried for so long. <laughs> but if you have a team, then one person can do this and one yeah. person can do that. And then third person, I mean, we need, out there. I mean, like Marie's a third person, yeah. but we need like 
a third person who, who offers like other things besides like our main group mm-hmm. but right. marie's a trooper dude she mm-hmm. is like mm-hmm. perfect perfect camera material yeah i'm excited to go shooting today actually yeah dude i've been shooting in a little bit and over by the bridge you get some flow does that clock work that clock the miller light clock do you think it works? No. It wor- It wor- Okay, this is what I'll tell you. <laughs> it works if I plug it in. <laughs> okay. Because gotcha. I was like, is that the real time? Dude, it glows too. Oh, that'd be cool. Like, I kind of want to know if I can like buy it off them so like I can incorporate it in my set. It, dude. What What do you think? Build a wall, like. Who are you, Trump? <laughs> <laughs> If you get me that many Legos, man, <laughs> we will go build that wall. The Great Wall of Legos. The Great Wall of Legos with the <laughs> statues of Legos. Um, no, but I want to build like and you know like accent wall or like a really nice wall, like a set wall. Yeah. Like the Peter yeah. McKinnon, and cool. then hang that, and like we could have like signs or something. I don't know, but I heard that getting a neon sign for like a custom made one is like impossible. So I would just do something simpler and have right. the suit cast. I really want a nice studio. Like, that's that's my overall goal. And I don't really care about having, like, a downtown studio. That will come eventually if I just grind at it hard enough. But having, like, this at least, and then I can work on, like, the other things. And then eventually I'll have a dope-ass place. Right. And I can be like, I did it. But, like, just starting is where, where we're at. So can I come here to shoot the beginning of my vlog for Iceland? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Sick. we can get you set up. Like I can, I can set this whole thing up. So, just give you a whole file, and we don't even have to export it once. Cool. What are you thinking? <laughs> now I'm interested. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, because I like this table. It's a nice color. I like the background. I'd be, we- I'd probably wear some neutral colors. You know, make it look good. Dude, I designed this podcast around this table. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, but yeah, I would uh, wear some neutral colors, and it'd be like, boom, go. S- like get some shot or like start the the vlog with some like like a b-roll of iceland shots you know me walking down like a cliff side or something like that by the waterfall or walking under the waterfall you know a clip of katie um or me turning around smiling stuff like that uh cut 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 boom into me sitting here and explaining to the what audience you're about to do. what i'm about to do and how much it means to me and how long I've been waiting for that trip and have some some really like smooth like kind of intense uh catching audio behind it like music behind it yeah very emotional so you can you can like feel the deep like like soul coming from me and then have it have just me sitting here at the table speaking to the audience about how much this trip is going to mean to me and everything and really capture capture the audience before moving into like the actual vlog of the trip. Whoa, I like it. It's gonna be dope. No, I oh. think I mean like if you need help, I mean I definitely can yeah. help you. That sounds like a dope ass project. Yeah. And you're gonna try to get your camera f- before then. So I really hope I can. I can I know. pull it. I can't wait for Canada. Canada's like it's just expensive. That's why I'm like. That's why I said no to Canada. Save up a little bit this year. Get one Go next year. Get the seventy to two hundred millimeter lens. Fix this lens. Get the what, the ribbon wire that came undone for the f stop. Getting that fixed. That's like a three hundred dollar fix. Ooh. Yeah, but somewhere out here does it. I mean, I don't really recommend people do this, but everyone's recommended this place that he does a great job. So I'm gonna take my luck i mean otherwise i spent 300 dollars on the lens and i don't really care right yeah like i've gotten over a year out of this thing for 300 bucks i'm good <laughs> like right. worst case i get a fixed lens you know what i mean like if he fixes actually fixes it which i think he will yeah if if i don't get a new camera before i go to iceland i'm gonna have to go back <laughs> well i might have to go with you depending on the time <laughs> holy shit <laughs> Because, yeah, I don't, that camera is just such an entry-level camera. Yours, yeah, I uh, it doesn't even have an aux port. I know. Like, if it had an aux port, it'd be like... I didn't oh. know what I was doing when I first got in. I didn't even know if I would like photography. Dude, we said this is how they sell money, though. This is yeah. why Nikon is the number one yeah, I think it is. sales for entry-level, at least. 
Right. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. I just looked up cameras and it said Nikon D3400 it was like one of the best options for you. Nikon 3500, but that was a little bit more. Was that on Amazon or where was that? I just looked it up on Google and it came right up. Freaking bought it on yeah, I bought it on Amazon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So they recommend. I mean, yeah, but they don't. They don't know right. what you're looking for. They're just like, hey, I mean, let's well, yeah, I, I didn't even know if I would like it. I bought the camera. It was super cheap. Got an extra lens for it, and I was like, started shooting. As soon as I took the first picture, I was like, whoa. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Took another one. Oh, wow. I had no idea what I was doing. I was sitting in my living room. So you've never <laughs> been into, like, creating media like that? Well, no. Besides I, I, your flow, like, besides the flow video, you haven't videos. created well, media like that? Like, where you just took photos of no, other things? Not and... photos, really. Like, I'd always play with my phone and take think I was, like, okay, could be a photographer, but, like, by taking pictures of my phone. I've always had a good eye for composition, too. Great eye for competition composition i'm i'm really good at art like painting drawing stuff like that wood burn art stuff like that so i've always felt i had an eye for it but i've never really gotten into it i always i actually growing up used to have the mentality like a photographer that's not really a skill all you do is point and shoot <laughs> it's not like that at all um no you really have to have an eye for it but yeah no I just think I'd like it. I mean, the original basics is point and shoot. You need to yeah. know how the camera works, but right. there's more to it. Like, but yeah, even just like positioning and like how to shoot something and how to get your lines and like and, and the focus and everything. It just it, there's a lot to it if you want to take a, a truly phenomenal photo. You know. No, true. But yeah, when I first took took my photo, I was, I was sitting in my living room with my ukulele trying to take macro shots of of the strings going down the the neck of the the u- or like the ukulele um trying to trying to take 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 pictures of the like the neck of the ukulele or whatever with a, a kit lens it's like a like a 24 millimeter lens or 24 to 55 millimeter lens or something like that mm-hmm. trying to take macro shots of that thing because i didn't know what i was doing but i was taking pictures of this and i thought it was so cool and that's what really captured me and then i got another lens and then my mom gave me a 70 to 300 lens <sighs> <laughs> so then I started, Beast. yeah, and then I started really getting into it, and now I'm like addicted. Like I always want to go out. Yeah, no, it's fun, and like you always wanting to go out makes me think, and then I actually practically do what I want. Like more vlogs coming soon, more vlogs coming soon. I cannot repeat that enough. Like I'm so excited for that. Like when we're when you asked me to go last meet weekend, I was just like I want to, but I'm sick. I want to, but I'm sick. And I was going to make a vlog about going up top on the rooftops. Like, I think I, that's going to be so cool to mm-hmm. see. Yeah, I love it up uh, up on those ramps, man. Finding finding different ramps in the city. And, and then you met those two, that one photographer and the guy who owned the, the Mercedes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, I wish I would have went because I would have met them, the, yeah. those guys. And yeah. I would have, yeah. But you can't please everyone. I was sick. Right. I had to get better. Yeah, but. yeah that's sick. Oh, man. Dude. I all hurt and everything. That was weird. Yeah, no, we should go up on those ramps tonight. Why don't you get those trail shots up there? I was thinking about it. I was like, I was, oh, I don't know. <laughs> now, um, now, um, because I could, we could do that. Mm-hmm. How much was parking up there? Zero. Where do you park? You can drive right up there. Really? Yep. You can drive right up there? Drive right up there, park right up there. You're not supposed to because it's only re- it's resident parking only. But the whole entire, it's winter. No one parks on the top of a parking ramp in the middle of the winter. Was this, oh wait, I guess like, the slippery, and was, no. And it was empty. They, like, we parked on the street and paid for parking on the street. And it was like, paid like $2 for like, <coughs> a couple hours for parking on the street. Walked up there, noticed the entire parking lot, parking was empty. And there's like no gate thing. Yeah. You just, you get ticketed if you, if you, if you're not a resident. So you just drive right up there. You're parking, you're taking photos right next to your car. So if someone ever does come up, you can just get in your car and drive away. And so that three, uh, C300 dude, he, he, didn't, he live didn't live there? there? No, he just drove right up. Maybe we go check it out dip. then. I mean, I'm kind of interested in that. That'd yeah. be kind of fun. Well, let's go do that. You want to end this off right now? I mean, we yeah, can come back and podcast some other time. Thanks for coming on, dude. Yeah. Uh, plug your, your Instagrams, plug your things, whatever you want to be known as. Brian T. It was a lot of fun. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Enos Flows or at Brian T. Imagery. 
catch me on both. Um, I think you'll like some of the content uh, that I post. So I'll link I'll link those both down below. Do you want me to uh, link your Facebook page as well? or Link it all. Just link it all. it all. Okay, right. okay. All I right might here. need your Facebook. I'll try to find that one. I don't want Facebook. But Can you make it like... Whoosh, and have it like come up all pretty like when I do that? Oh, watch Brian Enos flows or... It doesn't matter. I could do like... Yeah, I could try that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Enos flow. I'm just going to have it pop <laughs> just fade up the opacity all right guys this has been the soup cast we dove into the soup we'll see you guys later have a good rest of your day